So we've heard a lot about fascism the last little bit. You've got Antifa running around beating the crap out of people with flagpoles, wearing black masks in the name of anti-fascism. Then you've got the right calling Antifa the real fascists, and then the media calling Trump a fascist, some viewers of the media calling the media a fascist, Democrats are the real fascists, Republicans are the real fascists, and basically everyone is Hitler. Except not actually. In fact, Hitler isn't even really that great of an example of a fascist at all. The reality is, we've all been using the word wrong. Hello, guilty here. Both the left and the right throw the word around to essentially refer to anyone they don't like. A puppy chewed my homework. Puppies are the real fascists. We're all having a dance party on the grave of the word fascism, and a bunch of old Italian philosophers are crying over a bottle of wine as we justify our misuse of their ideology by citing our college arts degrees and Wikipedia. The left tend to use the word fascist to refer to anyone to the right of Marx, while the right, well, they at the very least tend to reserve the word to describe people who use violence or force to silence political opponents. Both definitions are sorely mistaken, though. Before we get into what fascism actually is, let's discuss what it isn't. Fascism is not an ideology about throwing people into gas chambers, hating other races, and being on the right. And it certainly was not created by this man. And most definitely is not being perpetuated today by this man. In fact, being a gay, freedom-loving, rather libertarian guy is quite close to the opposite of a fascist. Fascism is an ideology focused around the idea that the vast majority of people need strict laws and guidance and far less freedom of choice in order to function properly and live fulfilling and meaningful lives. In fascism, people do have the right to exist, but need both societal and moral guidance, both formal and informal. The idea was definitely not coined by Adolf Hitler, but instead by a bunch of rather peaceful, somewhat nutty, but thoughtful philosophers from the late 1700s to 1900s. Some argue that British philosopher Thomas Carlyle is the true father of fascism. Carlyle watched as liberal principles swept the West, offering the vote and control of the government to wider ranges of people, and saw this as a destruction of natural hierarchy and the natural rules that appeared in society before. And he believed that if these rules totally disappeared, civilized society would unravel along with them. Others would focus on the Italian fascist movement, which is actually where the word fascist derives from, fascismo. Italy came out with philosophers Giovanni Gentile, Gabriel D'Annunzio, and Julius Vola, who was more of a critic of the movement, but we'll get into that later. And of course, the infamous Benito Mussolini, who put some of their ideas into practice. Now, other than Mussolini, people on average have never heard of any of these thinkers because, to be honest, we as a culture don't really know anything at all about fascism. We can hardly define it. And when asked about it, we'll probably just spout off Hitler's name in a staunch tone of disapproval, putting our utter ignorance on display to the world because if you've ever talked to a fascist or read a fascist philosopher, you'd know that Hitler's national socialism is actually put in a different category than proper fascism. People like Franco, Hitler, or Salazar were certainly inspired by Mussolini's fascism, but using Hitler as your stunning example of a fascist is sort of like naming Pluto as the best example of a planet. Technically, it's a type of planet, but you could probably pick a better example. While proper fascism was a top-down ideology where they believed that hierarchy and the state was absolute, National Socialism was more left-wing because of the socialist aspect. Hitler using the state to appease the people was actually a pretty disgusting idea to people who believed in older hierarchies. There's a rather famous historical incident where the King of Prussia was offered the crown of the liberal state of Germany in 1849 by the people, and instead of accepting it, he literally turned his nose up and said that he would not accept a crown from the gutter. That was despite the fact that he would have vastly expanded his power by accepting that gift. He, however, saw accepting the crown of a nation where his rule would be tied to the will of the people as a total bastardization of natural hierarchy. Another one of the biggest issues with naming Hitler as your stunning example of a fascist is a lot of the things people hate Hitler for, and therefore hate fascism for, had nothing to do with fascism at all. This leads to another major difference between fascism and national socialism. Fascism didn't have anything to do with race. 
National Socialism focused more on Germanic tribalism. Fascism focused on hierarchy. It was elitist, not racialist. And when there was a focus on race, it was really more a focus on homogeneity for the purpose of survival, not a supremacist thing as seen in the Third Reich. In fact, there are incidents where Mussolini invited the Jews of Italy into his office and said he never doubted their loyalty to the state. It was only when he depended on the Third Reich for survival and was asked to kill the Jews in his country that he acted in that manner. And trust me, I'm not defending Mussolini. He certainly didn't fight back much when asked to do horrific things. But this is just a matter of historical fact. One more myth about fascism is that it's on the right side of the political spectrum. The reality is people have a lot of trouble placing it anywhere on the political spectrum because there are so many nuances to it. One of the more famous Italian philosophers, Julius Evola, contributed a lot to fascist thinking, but was seen as one of fascism's greatest critics because he thought the movement was too left-wing. Many classical liberals and libertarians on the right despise fascism because it believes in taking away a lot of power from the individual and in expanding the state. In fact, one of the great inspirations of Marxists and fascists alike is a famous philosopher, George William Frederick Hegel, who critiqued the libertarian state as being something that could not fulfill us as human beings. And Nietzsche, another philosophical inspiration of fascists, is probably read by a decent amount of Antifa today. People on the right and the left will both throw the definition of fascism to the other side of the spectrum when convenient. But the reality is that the phenomenon of fascist ideology is kind of outside of that famous split between individualism and collectivism in the French tennis court. It's totally outside of our modern and limited ways of defining politics. It's a step back into an older world. Which brings me to what actually is fascism's end goal now that we've dispelled some of these myths about it. Well, that's the thing. Fascism doesn't really have an exact end goal. Fascists would describe it as not being utopian. Their goal is to simply keep going, not to fix all the problems, just to survive and make things better, or rather, what they believe to be better. And they have a focus on the state of nature in a very Hobbesian way. They believe that we need a fascist leviathan or elitist hierarchy to keep going and improving. And more than that, but to bring meaning and purpose into people's lives. Many fascists would describe their ideology as not being an ideology for today, but one for tomorrow. Now, it took me a bit of time to research this. It took me time to understand this. I've thrown the word fascist back at my political opponents because they pissed me off and because I saw them as the real authoritarians in the situation. But in reality, are Antifa working for a world of harsh tradition based on the principles of nature and a strong opposition to communism? Definitely not. They're running around creating 72,000 new genders every week trying to bastardize nature to an extent I didn't even know was humanly possible. And as for Antifa calling your average right-winger or libertarian a fascist, well, sorry guys, but I really doubt you'll find a single mainstream right-winger today that wants to expand the state and take away the natural rights and powers of the individual. In fact, they're fighting for the individual's rights harder than anyone on the left at the moment. The majority of us on the right adore small government. So I think it's time for us to retire the word fascist for name calling and reserve it for more legitimate uses. Maybe use it in an argument about Putin. You could certainly make a case that he's the closest thing we have to a real fascist today, but don't use it to simply describe anyone you disagree with because the dance party we're having on the grave of the word is not helping our society's discourse. It's not helping us truly define people. It's not helping us expose people. Instead, it's just leaving us in a very shallow and superficial state of political discussion. So I, for one, am going to stop calling everyone I don't like a fascist. Even if it does piss them off, I'm going to try to be better than devolving to uninformed name calling. If you enjoyed that video, then be sure to hit like and subscribe.